Hi, this is Jonas Hornblad, and we're here in Jönköping, and it's Scandinavian Trans Events presents City Vibes. So, uh, Jonas, how are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, really psyched for tonight. It's going to be great. You started producing back in early 2000. What did it sound like? Oh, it sounded uh, Euro Disco, and I tried everything, basically. Uh, so, yeah. How did you, yeah? A lot different from now, basically, yeah. How did you get into to the whole trance thing like that? I think it was through the Eurodisco, Eurodance vibe in the 90s and I found those compilations, you know, Trance Master and stuff. And then it's on that way into trance. You released your first track, Like You, in 2007. Uh, if you listen to it today, how, how does it sound in your ears like right now? I mean, production-wise, it's, of course, I'm not happy with it now, but... Uh, I still like the melody, the feeling of the track, and for being 2000, was it seven? Yeah, seven. Yeah, and I think it's quite good. It is quite good. Thanks. <laughs> Out of your own productions, uh, what's the best track to play live to a crowd? I mean, I did this bootleg remix of uh, Café del Mar, and I mean, it's a classic track, so of course it works, but uh, then my latest remix for Spark 7, uh, Senses works really well too so it's kind of those two at the moment yeah uh, how do you approach a remix in the production stage it's so different I mean if you ha if I have a vocal I just put the vocal in Cubase and then I try to work from the add some chords try to work with different chords from the original and um, then whatever feels right a beat maybe some whatever yeah and how do you approach uh, an original in production that's even messier, I think. I do everything at the same time, so no structure at all. I really should be better at that point, yeah. But it still works, right? I mean, it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. sometimes there is a track coming out of it, so yeah. You live in Stockholm and you have uh, the sound of Stockholm radio show. Yeah. Uh, what does Stockholm sound like? Stockholm is very housey at the moment, like the rest of the world, I guess. But still, there is some trance around there. It, we have Monday Bar, we have... Some smaller parties, but mainly house, yeah. And how how do you um, how do you um, how do you sound in your radio show? In the radio show, I try to mix house and trance, basically. So you try to lure people in with the house and then trick them into trance, basically. Stockholm is also the home of quite a few DJs. Actually, there's a lot of people uh, DJing and doing well. Who lives in Stockholm? Um, do you guys hang out? I mean, every one of you? Everyone, yeah. We go out every Friday, every Saturday. No, but yeah, we hang out. We're a gang like Mike Shiver, Hodel, JP Bates, everybody, yeah. Quite close. And do you work together mus musically as well? We try to work. But, but yeah, once in a while there's a track, a collab coming out, but it's more, more beer drinking than collabs, I think. Throughout your career, who has meant the most to you? Oh, that's a really hard question. It's hard to put like one name up there. Of, of course, the big, the big DJs. I mean, showing you you can make a living out of it. So yeah, I have to say the, the early ones, like the early Tiesto, Armin, of course. Who inspires you? What I like now is DJs who can mix genres and try I mean it's not that hard to mix only 128 nowadays but if you can throw in a bit of break beats and some dubstep some trance everything and make it sound good that's those people yeah how do you see the music scene um, what are your thoughts on the mixing because everything is changing right now and nothing is what it used to be I think it's good I mean of course it was harder to beat match on vinyl but on the other hand, now you can be more of an entertainer and, I mean, it's shifting. And of course, some people are going to say it was better before, but times are changing, so yeah. Who are, this is a tough question, but who are your heroes? <sighs> the heroes, I think the heroes are the ones who are not on stage, basically, who do the parties, who do the, all the groundwork and don't get that much appreciation, I think. I think people don't know how much time some guys spend on just making one party, so 
those are the heroes. Yeah. You were part of a you were part of a Swedish uh, TV show called Wonderful is Short. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the TV show. Yeah, that was a weird experience having a camera team following you around for a couple of months, and uh, yeah, but I think it was a good thing. I mean. I get lots of gigs, gigs in Sweden. Also. <laughs> was it easy to to say yes to be part of the show? Or? I thought about it quite many times before I said yeah, but I think it was worth it, definitely. Yeah. How was? Yeah. And the reactions have been so good. I mean, everybody says it's a great show. So, yeah. How did the show affect you? I mean, did you? Yeah. How did it affect you in any way? Yeah, it's weird to walk in the street and be recognized. I mean basically every day which is it's weird in the beginning but I'm, I'm getting used to it now so yeah but it's a really weird experience but you don't regret being part of the uh, TV show no of course not I mean people email me and tell me like you've been an inspiration blah 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 and it's I mean if it can be an inspiration for one person it's worth it I think My name is Jonas Warmblood and you are watching Kidsong.